Good afternoon, everyone. Welcome to the TCM and Acupuncture webinar brought to you by Lamp Foundation, Inc. Let's start with uh, blood under Lamp Basics. Let's welcome Mom Needs You of Sri Lanka Beta, certified acupuncturist. Good afternoon, Mom Needs. Good afternoon, once again, Dr. Hector, and good afternoon, classmates. So here in our Lamp Basics topic, uh, day six is about blood, okay? Uh, liver, it stores blood. When erect and engaged in normal everyday movement, blood flows to muscles and sinews. And when a person lies down, blood flows back to liver. So when active, blood circulates in the vessels. And when persons rest, blood goes back to liver. Okay, para cycle lang. When lying down, blood regenerates itself in the liver. Hence, the importance of having adequate rest or lying down uh, in cases of deficient liver blood. Yan, kapag ka hindi, na, hindi ka nag-lie down, magkakaroon ka ng deficient liver blood. Blood stored in liver moistens the eyes. It promotes good sight. So, yun. And, and it moistens the sinews. It promotes flexibility of joints. Okay? Blood goes to liver during sleep so that when adequately supplied with blood, eyes can see, hands can hold, fingers can grasp, feet can walk. So, pag may problema, ayan. Ayan yung may problema ka. Hindi nagsusupply ng blood. When blood is harmonized, sinews are strong and joint supple. Okay? Blood of liver supplies uterus with blood. It, close, it is closely related to penetrating vessel or the Chiang Mai. This vessel supplies uterus with blood, but this supply depends on provision of blood from liver. Thus, liver blood is extremely important for regular and healthy menstrual function. Okay? So, functions of liver blood, it nourishes the sinews, it nourishes the eyes, it regulates the uterus, okay? Uh, kidneys and liver have a common origin. Kidneys store essence, liver stores blood. Pero medyo nakakalito, no? <laughs> kidneys are mother of liver according to five elements. So essence and blood mutually influence each other, okay? Essence can be transformed into blood. Blood nourishes and replenishes essence. Kidney essence controls reproductive function and since it influences blood, blood also influences reproductive function in women. Okay? If liver blood is deficient like amenorrhea or scanty periods, yan, stagnant liver blood can cause painful periods. Okay? Menstrual blood originates directly from kidney essence. This matures into tiangui during puberty, yung age ng 14 for girls and 16 for boys. Menstrual blood is tiangui and direct manifestation of kidney essence, yung sa, it is the same way what sperm is for men, okay? Tiangui, tiangui is menstrual blood in women and sperm in men. It originates directly from the kidney essence and it matures at puberty. Thus, although part of blood, menstrual blood is a more precious fluid because it derives directly from the kidney essence. Okay? Uh, let's go to lungs. Uh, it assists spleen in sending food chi, food chi to heart where it is transformed into blood. It controls all channels and blood vessels. This means that lungs infuse chi into blood vessels to assist pushing action of heart. Okay? Kidneys naman, it contribute to production of blood in two ways. One, original chi assist in transformation of food chi into blood. Two, kidney essence can be transformed into blood. Uh, to nourish blood, we need to tonify the spleen and kidneys. Okay? Heart, spleen, liver are most important with relation to blood. Heart governs blood, 
Spleen holds blood in vessels. Liver stores blood. Okay. Thank you very much for your attention. Thank you very much, Mam Needs. From uh, Silang, Cavite, we go to Rizal. Let's listen to Mam Teresita Sumile for body fluids. Good afternoon, Mam Teresita. Good afternoon po, Dr. Hector and classmates. Welcome po sa TCM Basics. Day 6 na po tayo sa body fluids. Because bad blood and body fluids come from same source and mutually nourish each other, sweating and bleeding treatment methods are contradictory in practice and should never be used together. If patient is bleeding, one should not induce sweating. If, while if patient is sweating, bleeding as treatment method is contraindicated. If there is profuse bleeding, do not cause sweating. If there is profuse sweating, do not cause bleeding. This is because sweating causes loss of fluids. And as we all know, body fluids and blood are blended together and they are closely related to each other. Now, if body fluids is deficient, eventually blood also becomes deficient. So in a patient with severe deficiency of blood, do not cause sweating. Okay, pa? Pathology of blood fluids. Body fluids can be pathologically altered in two di different ways. Deficiency of body fluids and accumulation of body fluids in the form of edema, dampness, or phlegm. Now let's go to our patient. Female, female, 36 years old. Tongue description, red, so it indicates heat. Red points at the sides, liver heat, and then dry and rough coating indicates deficiency due to heat, okay? Now, let's correlate this red, uh, this tongue description with the symptoms. Shortened menstrual cycle, which is a manifestation of blood deficiency. Then extremely profuse menstrual bleeding, very red menstrual blood. So uh, there is heat in the blood. And hot flashes, we know that hot flashes is one of the symptoms of kidney in deficiency and irritability before onset of menstruation and depression. So, Liver po yan, okay? Then, let's Western diagnosis. We have primary infertility. Background to disease, unhappy marriage, frustration, suppressed anger. Uh, so, liver na liver po. And then, excessive intake of coffee. So, it, there is really presence of heat because coffee has hot in nature, okay? Now, TCM diagnosis, kidney deficiency. Heat in the liver and injury to fluids due to heat. Okay, pa. Then another second patient, we have female, 34 years old. Down description, again, red, there is heat, and then thin, cracked body shape indicates deficiency. So there is deficiency. <clears throat> And then coating without truth, uh, deficiency, pardon. Then symptoms, severe exhaustion, inner restlessness, sore throat, numbness of left thigh, frequent disease spells, and occasional night sweats. So there is deficiency. Uh, there is heat due to yin deficiency. Okay. So Western diagnosis, multiple sclerosis, chronic tonsillitis, blindness due to optic nerve, and atrophy of left eye. Background the disease, irregular eating habits, frequent bouts of influenza, and long-standing emotional problems. So TCM diagnosis, we have blood and kidney deficiency, and stomach and kidney deficiency. Next patient, we have a male, 38 years old. Tongue description, red, slightly 
thin, cracked, coating without root, and red tip. So kung may red tip is an indication of heart heat or heat in the heart. In slightly thin crack coating, that is an indication of body blood or body fluids deficiency. Then red, hot. Okay. Severe ex symptoms are severe exhaustion, depression, lacking self worth, and night sweats. So night sweats. Alam mo po natin kung ano ang indication of night sweats. So it is kidney and deficiency and sore throat. Western diagnosis, chronic tonsillitis. Background to disease, long-standing emotional problems since childhood, suppressed anger, so end of our work. The same diagnosis, we have kidney and deficiency, fluids and kidney and deficiency, and heat in the heart. This is due to long-standing emotional problems because all emotions affects the heart. Hepa. And the last patient is female, 40 years old. Tongue description, deep red, so, and no coating, so deficiency with empty heat. Uh, symptoms, severe long-lasting menstrual bleeding, dark red, strong smelling menstrual blood, insomnia, and inner restlessness. Back, a Western diagnosis, none. Background to disease, deep frustration with life, excessive consumption of meat and spicy fried foods. So there is really presence of heat. That's all the same diagnosis. We have kidney yin deficiency and heat in the blood and fluid deficiency. Okay, pa? thank you so much for listening. Thank you very much, Mom Teresita. From from Rizal, we go to Baguio. Let's listen to Mom Vina Pasqua for Yin and Yang, Aspects of the Body. Good afternoon, Mom Vina. Good afternoon, po, uh, Doctor. Good afternoon, po, sa lahat. So, Yin and Yang Aspects of the Body. Yin and Yang in tradi uh, traditional Chinese medicine. How does the theory of Yin and Yang relate to the human body? Pag yang po, uh, yang is energy, our ability to move, think, and maintain homeostasis is yang. Pag yin naman is matter. Our physical body, so yung skin, bones, muscle, represents yin. Just as we cannot walk without legs or run, run without energy, yin cannot exist without yang, and yang cannot exist without yin. So checks and balances how yin and yang maintain life. So in our body, yang produces energy. Uh, it's an energy chi. Sympathetic system, uh, fight and flight, uh, daily functions. Pag yin naman produces form, skin, bone, muscles, blood, body fluids, parasympathetic system, ito yung rest and digest nightly functions. So normal body functions depende to sa balance ng yin at saka yang. Punta tayo sa environment. Environmental yang, summer is full of yang, so my heat and sunshine. Our body spends time outdoors to vent inter, uh, internal heat, ito yung yang, and to serve yin. Our health is dependent po upon the balance of our internal yin and yang and our ability to interact and adapt to fluctuating a yin and yang of the environment. Environmental yin, winter is more yin kasi po yung cold and lack of sunshine. So, nasa bahay lang tayo and eat warm foods to conserve our yang. Yin and yang aspects of the body should always be considered in comparison. Pag sinabing exterior is yang, does not mean that one could not have yin illnesses in exterior. Example po, yung nakakaramdam po ng cold and shivering. Skin disease uh, or muscular problems are more likely to be yang dominant because of their contact with exterior than would a respiratory or skeletal problems. 
So, ito yung ano niya, yin, uh, yin, yang, front, back, down, up, medial, lateral, ex, uh, interior, exterior po. Dito naman nakikita natin yung head, uh, head to two, yung upper body, so uh, lower body, external body, uh, lateral side of the limbs, o medial side of the limbs, sa back front naman, front body, uh, yin meridians at yang meridians. Ito naman sa internal body, signs sa uh, six hollow organs and saka yung five solid organs. Yung T and blood, protective T at saka nutritive T. The five solid organs, heart and lungs, spleen, liver and kidneys. And ito yung functional aspect at saka physical aspect. Yan ang yang at saka yun. Clinical example. So, merong patient presented with dermatitis all over her body and limbs. Curiously, the front of the chest and abdomen were the only parts where skin is, was not affected. This happened to be the yin surfaces. Therefore, one could, uh, could conclude na yung patient has a yang disease and nag-improve po with more yin as the frontal areas, frontal areas that already have more yin are free of the disease. You could make the same assumption if someone had a acnerosacea, acne rosacea with a red face but cold pale feet. Another patient presented with pain and edema in joints, uh, in the joints of her feet after suffering with the with these pains for over a year, uh, nag start siya na getting pain in the knees and hips. Because of the pains are mainly in the lower part of the body, this would be a yin disease. Pag yung patient naman had pains mainly sa hands, elbows, neck, and shoulders, this would uh, most likely to be a disease for. It is possible to have arthritis of joints in both upper and lower parts in eczema all over the body. Then we cannot use these concepts for differentiating the symptoms, but we can use other comparisons instead. Yin meridians flow along the medial and ventral side of the arms and legs. Yang meridians naman flow along lateral and dorsal sides of the limbs. So dito nakikita with hands above head, yin meridians flow from earth upwards to yang meridians flow from heaven downwards. The yang hand meridians. Yin and yang surfaces are, are based on the time when man was an ape and walked in his four legs, dorsal and lateral parts that were exposed to exterior climatic factors. So ito yung protecting side became young surface. These areas have more body hair in order to cover and protect the body. Ventral and medial sides were the protected, uh, protected surfaces. surfaces. They naturally became yin surfaces. So, yan lang po. Thank you, doctor. Thank you to lahat. Thank you very much, Ma'am Vina. From Baguio, we go to Legaspi, and let's listen to Sir Dino Pinero for the five elements. Good afternoon, Sir Dino. Good afternoon, Doc. Good afternoon po sa lahat. Now, uh, sa five elements na po tayo, yung uh, case cycle or the controlling cycle. Yung case cycle prevents Shen cycle from getting out of control. Yung grandmother controls the child's growth. Okay? So, dito po yung controlling cycle, yung wood controls the earth, yung earth naman uh, controls the water, and yung water controls the fire, yung fire controls the metal, metal and yung metal naman controls the wood. Sa Chinese five elements, ang liver, gallbladder, 
yung beginning, envisioning, ang emotion niya is anger, yung faith, and season is spring. Uh, kinocontrol niya ang earth, which is the spleen and stomach. Uh, yung po yung supporting, centering, ang worry, ang thinking, yung Indian summer. While sa earth naman, kinocontrol niya yung water, which is the kidney and bladder. Siya po yung accepting, forgiving, fear, generosity, winter. Kinocontrol naman niya yung fire, which is the heart, pericardium, small intestine, and triple burner. Siya yung, po yung risking, manifesting, joy, sadness, and summer. Yung fire naman, kinocontrol niya yung lungs, large intestine, siya po yung reconing, uh, discerning, grief, discernment, and fall. Okay? Sa characteristics, yung Kes cycle exists simultaneously with Sheng cycle. So, dito let yung wood, which is the gallbladder and liver, sa Sheng cycle, siya naman yung nagsusupport or nag-generate ng small intestine, heart, sanjiao, pericardium, siya po yung fire element, and uh, sinusupport naman niya yung earth, which is the stomach and spleen, Ang earth naman, ina, uh, sinusupport or gen generate niya yung lung and colon, which is the metal. And yung metal, gen generate niya naman yung water, which is the kidney and bladder. And gen generate niya ulit yung wood, uh, which is the gallbladder and liver. Same with this arrow sa so center, uh, ito po yung gas cycle. Sa so characteristics, the pathology occurs when the child's growth is over control. So, minsan, hindi lang controlling, pero there is an over controlling uh, change cycle or uncontrolled Wu cycle. Either one is a harmful as no growth at all. So, excess po yun. So, yung arrow sa Sheng in gendering cycle Yung black arrow, sake, or restraining cycle. Yung double arrow, cheng, overwhelming cycle. And yung big arrow, wu, or rebellion cycle. So here's a picture. Ang, ang wood, papunta po sa earth, itong arrow. Pag single arrow, ito po yung restraining, okay, or restraining cycle. Pag double arrow, Ito po yung cheng or uh, overwhelming cycle. Yung opposite, yung malaking araw pabalik sa wood, earth pabalik sa wood, meaning there is rebellion cycle. So, ganun din po sa other elements. Okay po. Sa characteristics, yung energy moves only from yin official to yin official on the Key, key cycle. Yung key, key cycle pathways do not generate their own energy. Okay, uh, metaphorically, yung earth guides water. Ito yung water cools fire. And yung fire naman warms the metal. And yung metal naman uh, prones wood. And yung wood naman holds earth. Sa so clinical significance to discern the influence of the grandmother on the child, the path of care cycle can be used to transfer energy from one yin official to another yin official. So ang ganda lang po. Thank you for, for listening. Maraming salamat po, Sir Dino. Up next is the uh, the types of chi. Let's listen once again to Ma'am Teresita Sumile from Rizal. Good afternoon, Olet, Dr. Hector, and classmates. Types of chi. Day nine na po tayo. 
true chi or zen chi. This is the last stage of transformation of chi. Ito po then ang gathering chi is transformed into true chi under catalytic action of original chi. And this is the final stage in process of refinement and transformation of chi. Chi that circulates in channels and nourishes organs. So, dito naman ang illustration. So, hindi ko na po ito i-discuss kasi pa ulit ulit po na lang po itong tinidiscuss. Okay po? Uh, true chi or zen chi also originates eventually from lungs like gathering chi. Hence, lungs function of controlling chi in general has two different forms. These are nutritive chi or yin chi and defensive chi or wei chi. It originates from gathering chi or zong chi. Originates from the lungs, assumes two forms, which are nutritive chi, yin chi, and defensive chi or wei chi. Now let's talk about nutritive chi or yin chi. It nourishes internal organs and whole body. It is closely related to blood and flows with it in blood vessels and channels. Extracted from food and water, regulates five yin organs, moistens six yang organs, link with five yin organs, and connects with six yang organs. Chi that is activated whenever a needle is inserted in an acupuncture point. Nutritive chi nourishes the internal organ and is closely linked to blood and flows in channels and blood vessels. Now, sa defensive chi naman po tayo. Way or is to defend, to protect. It is a coarser form of chi as it flows on outer layers of body. It is yang in relation to nutritive chi, which flows in inner layers and internal organs. Nutritive chi flows in blood vessels and channels, while defensive chi flows outside channels. Derived from coarse part of food and water, slippery in nature, hence cannot enter channels, therefore, circulates under skin, in between muscles, vaporizes in between membranes, and diffuses over chest and abdomen. So nutritive chi is in the interior and nourishes, while defensive chi is on the exterior and protects. So that is their differentiation. Main function of defensive chi is to protect body from attacks of exterior pathogenic factors like wind, cold, heat, and dampness. It warms, moistens, partially nourishes skin and muscles, adjusts opening and closing of pores, therefore regulates sweating, and by so doing, regulates body temperature. It warms muscles, fills up skin, enters space between skin and muscles, and opens the pores. Thank you so much for listening. Thank you very much, Mom Teresita. So from uh, Rizal, we go back to Sri Lanka, Vite, uh, to listen to Mom Needs You, Certified Acupuncturist. Good afternoon, po, Mom Needs. She will Hello. discuss uh, uh, yes, the urinary bladder. Urinary bladder. Good afternoon, Doc Hector, and good afternoon, classmates. So, topic for today urinary bladder functions. Okay, uh, Pangwan. Bladder is located in lower abdomen. abdomen. Bladder stores and discharges urine. Uh, it has exterior interior relationship with kidneys. Okay. It assimilates impure fluids from other organs. Impure parts of fluids separated by small intestine 
are passed onto the bladder for further transformation into the urine. Okay. Bladder requires kidney yang for its function of transforming fluids. That is the bladder transformation. You know, function of ensuring regular and inhibited discharge of urine. Okay. Uh, bladder is young aspect of kidneys. If kidney yang is sufficient, bladder stores and discharges urine properly. If kidney yang is weak, bladder is affected and can lead to enuresis and incontinence. Okay. Uh, emotions connected to bladder. Yun yung jealousy, suspicion, holding grudges, and fear. Member po. Uh, let's go to urinary bladder relationships. Okay. Bladder and the small intestine. Small intestine passes impure aspect of fluids onto the bladder. Okay. Bladder to kidney. Bladder has exterior interior relationship with kidneys. It requires kidney yang in order to maintain its functions. Okay. La if kidney yang is sufficient, bladder stores and discharges urine properly. Kidneys depend on bladder to secrete impure fluids. Okay. Uh, let's go to urinary bladder pathology. Uh, kapag ka deficiency pattern, bladder chi deficiency. Kapag ka excess, dump cold in the bladder, dump heat in the bladder. Okay. It is because uh, bladder chi deficiency. It is because bladder requires kidney yang for maintaining its proper functions. Bladder chi deficiency results from kidney yang deficiency, or it can occur in conjunction with kidney yang deficiency. Okay. Cardinal symptoms, dribble after voiding, urinary incontinence, frequent urination, bedwetting, feeling in lower back as if the back would break, clear copious urine. Okay. Damp cold in the bladder, it is caused by invasion of external cold and dampness or by chronic bladder chi deficiency. Okay. Uh, cardinal symptoms of damp cold in bladder, frequent voiding of clear urine, copious pale, cloudy urine, feeling of heaviness in lower abdomen, edema in lower extremities accompanied by feeling of heaviness, difficult urination, white greasy tongue coating at the root, aversion to cold. Okay. Damp heat naman in the bladder. It can result as a reaction to damp cold in the bladder. Okay. Uh, cardinal symptoms, urinary urgency, painful urination, inhibited urination, decreased amount of urine, uh, cloudy yung urine, may hematuria, sandy urine para may buhangin, acute prostatitis, and acute cystitis. Okay. Thank you for attention. Thank you very much, Dr. Hector and everyone. Thank you very much, Ma'am Neets. And I'm sure maraming natutunan yung ating attendees on the bladder, the urinary bladder. Up next is Meridian Theory. And let's listen once again to Sir Dino Pinheiro from Legaspi. Good afternoon po ulit, Sir Dino. Good afternoon, Doc. Good afternoon po sa lahat. Okay, sa Meridian Theory na tayo, part 9, yung large intestine channel of hand bright young. So dito yung illustration po ng large intestine meridian of the heart hand bright young. Ang large intestine nag-start po dito sa may dulo ng index finger, uh, paakyat, Tapos pumunta po dito sa may do 14 sa likod and pabalik po yung isa papunta pababa sa stomach 37 and yung isa naman from LI15 pakiat po dito sa may LI20 sa nose. 
the meridian begins at LI1 at the radial side of the index finger. Yung radial side po, yung side no thumb. But in the energy flow between the meridians in the superficial energy circulation, the energy flows out of the lung meridian to large intestine at an earlier point. The energy flows out of the lung seven, also called exit point, into point LI4, also called entry point. So from lung seven, pumupunta po ng LI4. The meridian flows of the laters, lateral side of arm to the elbow and shoulder along the anterior border of the acromion to the front of the neck between the two heads of the sternocleidomastoid muscle. Dito po sa my neck to the face. It crosses the midline of the face over the lips and ends at the opposite side of the face at the side of the nose. So kung halimbawa sa right hand, mag-cross po siya ng opposite side ng face, ang large intestine, uh, mag-i-end dito sa opposite side ng nose. The inner branches from the acromion to the seventh cervical vertebra, yung sabi ko po, pumunta sa likod, 2.214, where all young meridians meet. So, sumama din po sa 214. Ito po yung another branch, enter the supraclavicular fossa to the interior and flows into the lungs, coupled organ and farther downward into the large intestines. So, ito po yung picture, yung flow. Sundan lang po ninyo yung mga points hanggang mag-end po dito sa LI20. The, okay, the location ng LI1 on the index finger, dito po sa picture, titingnan nyo po, 0.1 tune from the radial corner of the nail. Ang point explanation niya, the first point of the meridian, it is also the metal point, which is the house element of the organ. As such, the point can be tonified or sedated selectively in order to increase or decrease the young energy. It is used sparingly because of its painful location, so hindi siya madalas ginagamit dahil masakit, at the corner of the fingernail. Nevertheless, it is a good pain relieving point in itself, especially for toothache. So, ginagamit po sa toothache. LI2 naman, yung location, dito po sa picture, sa my index finger pa rin. On the radial aspect of the index finger, distal to the metocarpopalangeal joint. At the junction of the shaft, and the basis of the proximal phalanx. So, malapit po dito sa my joint. Yung point explanation, this is used sa sedation point and water point of the meridian. Applying sedation needle technique on the point not only disperses large intestine yang, but also sedates lung yang indirectly. As they are coupled organs with an interior connection between them. So, tingnan po natin yung location ng LI1. Okay po? Sa LI4 naman, dito yung picture niya. Nasa may gitna po siya ng itong uh, index finger na bone. On the radial aspect of the hand between the first and second metacarpal bones, close to the second metacarpal bone and approximately at its midpoint. Yung point Explanation, ito po yung U1 source point. Area distal point for head and face and meridian distal point. It is one of the most commonly used point in acupuncture. It is excellent in the treatment of any problem of the head, face, and in general, pain condition. So maganda po siya sa mga uh, problem or issues na na nakaroon uh, sa head and face and sa mga pain condition. This point is also referred to as the great eliminator. It's very useful when treating constipation 
but can also be used to treat other elimination problems such as difficult urination, difficulty in showing emotions, painful menstruations, and even in childbirth to assist in opening the cervix. So, pwede natin uh, ma-advise yung mga nagbubuntis kung gusto nila mabilis yung panganganak. Ito po yung pressure point na pwede nilang uh, diinan while naglilabor. However, care should be taken not to use the point if your patient is pregnant or has diarrhea or excessive sweating already. This may worsen their symptoms or cause miscarriage. So magagamit po natin siya sa panganganak pero during sa pagbubuntis, hindi po siya dapat gamitin. The life four is the entry point of the meridian, meaning the energy from the preceding lung meridian flows in at this point and not through LI1 in the superficial energy circulation. So entry point po siya ng meridian, yung LI4. So thank you po for your attention. Thank you very much, Sir Dino, for the first top of the LI channel of uh, Han Yang Ming. Okay, so we now go to the last but not the least topic, bleeding. Ah, hindi na pala bleeding, sorry. Let's listen to Ma'am Vina Pasqua once again from Baguio. She is starting uh, on a new topic called breathlessness. Good afternoon po ulit, Ma'am Vina. Good afternoon po ulit, Doctor. Good afternoon po sa lahat. So breathlessness, etiology po. Um, tawag po nila sa breathlessness sa Chinese, di ko lang pag po nang pakicheck doc, Chuan, in Chinese medicine. Chuan means to pant. The symptoms and signs of breathlessness have been described uh, sa book po to. In fact, the same, uh, when the lungs are diseased, there is panting, cough, breathlessness, pain in the shoulders, and the back and sweating. So sinabi po dito po sa book, when chi is in excess, so dito sa dibdib, there is panting, cough, and breathlessness. And when she is deficient, there is difficulty in breathing with shallow breath. When the pathogenic factors are in the lungs, the skin is painful, there are feelings of heat and cold, panting, sweating, cough, and pain in the shoulders. Uh, panting is breathlessness at rest with inability to lie down. Also included uh, is a sound in the throat like a more morning. Thus, ang tawag po sa panting in Chinese medicine includes difficulty in breathing, breathing with an open mouth, lifting of the shoulders when breathing, and inability to lie down. This could be an acute or chronic state form. External pathogenic factors etiology. Invasion of wind cold or wind heat is an important causative factor of breathlessness in many ways. First of all, both can cause acute breathlessness. External wind obstructs the lungs and prevents the diffusing and descending of chi. At nag-result po ito in an accumulation of chi sa dibdib and brings breathlessness. Second, an invasion of wind cold or wind heat can trigger an acute attack in patients suffering from chronic breathlessness. Third naman, external wind in itself is a frequent initial cause for the beginning of what eventually becomes chronic breathlessness. This is especially true in children. So yung bata po suffers from an invasion of wind cold or wind heat so kaya repeated invasions, the pathog pathogen is not expelled properly, either through lack of treatment, kaya through repeated treatment with antibiotics. The external pathogenic factor turns into phlegm with or without heat, and it lodges itself in the interior. 
there is uh, it continuously obstructs the descending of lang chi causing chronic breathlessness. Ang tawag po nila dito ay residual pathogenic factor. And it is very common cause of chronic breathlessness in both adults and children. A residual pathogenic factor may be formed at the exterior stage of an invasion of wind. Or when the wind has become interior, usually turning itself into heat. Pag yung exterior wind po invades the body, it frequently upsets the ascending and descending of spleen and stomach chi. This is even, even more likely to happen at the interior stage. For this reason, a residual pathogenic factor very frequently manifests with dampness or a phlegm. So dito po yung nakikita natin kanina, yung sinabi, yung wind, we, we, we label, chill label, at saka yung blood label, yan po yung mga label sa PC. Pag we label po, it's blood uh, completely. Uh, we label residual pathogenic factor. The chill label naman, complete recovery, residual pathogenic factor. Uh, yan po ang formation of residual pathogenic factor. So dito naman, exterior pathogenic factor, uh, merong dampness and phlegm, so not expelled residual pathogenic factor, it disrupts of the spleen chi and the sending of the stomach chi. Exterior pathogenic factor, uh, then in interior pathogenic factor, not cleared, so nagkakaroon ng dampness at phlegm, it disrupts ascending of the spleen chi and the sending of uh, stomach chi. Uh, then residual uh, pathogenic factor, my dampness and phlegm. Formation of dampness and phlegm in residual pathogenic factor. So, yan lang po. Thank you, doctor. Thank you sa lahat. Thank you very much, Ma'am Vina. And uh, we would like to thank everyone for joining. A special thanks to all of our presenters. Hope to see you in our next lecture. Good afternoon, everyone.